Putin's invasion is not going as planned. After 10 months of war in Ukraine, Russia has failed to take any of the country's major cities and has suffered staggering losses, with estimates nearing 100,000 dead. As the war has shifted away from urban combat and towards a protracted artillery battle in the east, the tide has turned even further in favor of Ukraine. Armed with billions of dollars of advanced Western military hardware, Ukrainian troops have achieved a string of significant victories in the Kherson and Donbass regions. As of November the 14th, they had reclaimed 54% of the land originally captured by Russia. This has mainly been enabled by the influx of deadlier, more accurate weaponry like satellite-guided missiles, exploding autonomous drones, and a huge stockpile of artillery. How is Russia dealing with these huge setbacks? As the Russian army has been forced back across the Dnipro River, Putin's tactics have grown harsher. Indiscriminate attacks on Ukrainian apartments, schools, and hospitals are common, while Russian troops are being sent to the front lines with little equipment or training. To replace his enormous losses, Putin announced a partial mobilization of more than 300,000 Russian conscripts in September. The move was intended to dramatically increase Russia's infantry combat power, but the result has been seriously underwhelming. Now, in an attempt to avoid more humiliating defeats, Putin and his top generals have adopted a human wave strategy, one which could spell disaster for Russia. But why? The answer has a lot to do with Russia's military history and Putin's many issues since invading Ukraine. Human wave attacks are one of the most brutal and costly tactics available to military leaders. They involve an unprotected frontal assault on enemy lines by densely packed infantry troops, designed to overwhelm defenders in close-range combat. This inevitably involves sacrificing large numbers of the attacker's own troops as cannon fodder, usually making a human wave a last resort. And while human wave tactics are rarely used by modern militaries, they have a long history in warfare. Their modern use was pioneered in conflicts of the late 19th century such as the American Civil War and the Boxer Rebellion in China. These were also some of the earliest conflicts involving machine guns, which were used to decimate enemy charges while attackers tried to overrun defensive positions with their sheer numbers. Russia and the USSR used human wave tactics in numerous conflicts, such as the Russo-Japanese War, the Russian Civil War, and both world wars. While it has often proved highly effective, the strategy has also resulted in extensive Soviet and Russian casualties on a number of occasions. During the Battle of Stalingrad, the single deadliest battle of World War II, Soviet commanders attempted to hug the German forces by keeping their troops as close to them as physically possible. At the same time, artillery and bombs would pummel the front line. While these tactics greatly slowed the Germans and ultimately turned the tide, they also led to nearly a million Soviet casualties in that battle alone. This was achieved partially by shooting any soldier who retreated, as Joseph Stalin was quoted saying, in the Soviet army it takes more courage to retreat than advance. And since Putin's invasion of Ukraine has already led to over 100,000 Russian deaths, he seems to have decided to sacrifice as many soldiers as necessary to hold eastern Ukraine. It also appears that Putin hopes his threats of nuclear Armageddon will keep Ukraine's armed forces at bay until he can reinforce his manpower on the ground. Yet even his mobilization is hardly going as planned. As an article from several military experts puts it, Russian reservist battalions are to be sent to the front in Ukraine after a minimum of two to three weeks training to form weak units to hold the line or be expended in senseless assaults more similar to human waves than to modern combined arms warfare. Some have compared the situation to that of the Iran-Iraq War of the 1980s, where Iran sent tens of thousands of untrained conscripts to charge the front lines and counter Iraq's superior weaponry. But where many Iranian soldiers had morale, in Russia it looks to be the opposite. Far more Russians have fled abroad than have actually joined the military through conscription, perhaps because the chance of becoming a casualty is so high. A recent report from the Ukrainian general staff found that one Russian battalion lost over 520 men, close to half of its total strength. The reservists needed to fill gaps like these probably don't expect to live very long themselves. There are also many reports of draft tickets being delivered to those who should be exempt from Putin's mobilization, such as chronically ill and disabled Russians, active university students, and defense industry workers. In some cases, even already deceased citizens have had their names drawn on draft tickets. A recent law from Putin also began drafting criminals convicted of murder, robbery, larceny, drug trafficking, 
or other serious offences, many of whom find themselves part of the most brutal battles yet. And because of their inadequate training, Russian conscripts from all backgrounds are often unable to use the more advanced weaponry like missiles and artillery, leaving them with only the most basic firepower. So what happens to these men on the battlefield? Once they arrive at the front, sometimes with only a day or two of training, things are not likely to get better for Russians. Basic equipment is extremely limited, with soldiers lacking guns, ammunition, and even proper clothing. Several reports note that the recruits have been told to take with them warm clothing, sleeping bags, personal hygiene items, first aid kits, blankets, etc. They are mostly not issued body armor. Because of this, the approaches they can take in combat are seriously limited. This is evident in the recent fighting across the Donbass region in Ukraine's east over key roads, some of the most ferocious since the war began. If Ukraine can retake the roads, it will make Russian efforts to resupply even harder and deal another serious blow to Putin. So in a last-ditch effort not to lose any more territory, Russia has dug in while wave upon wave of infantry troops storm Ukrainian positions. Much like in past conflicts, the cost of this human wave strategy has been enormous. Some reports indicate that Russia is losing as many as 800 soldiers a day in its effort to halt the Ukrainian advance. In the front lines of Russia's human wave are the recently conscripted criminals, many coming directly from penal colonies in Siberia and elsewhere. In some places, this has become so horrific that medics have taken to referring to it as the meat grinder. Behind the convicts are the recently mobilized troops, most of whom are treated little better than the hardened criminals. Many are drawn from the poorest and most marginalized areas of Russia and face a life in prison if they object. Behind the conscripts are regular soldiers, known as barrier troops, who are under orders to shoot anyone that retreats. As military analyst and professor Michael Clark puts it, the idea is you go forward or you die. This scorched earth approach may be partly a result of the top Russian general now in charge of the invasion, Sergei Surovakin. Surovakin was previously in charge of Russia's operations in Syria, where he unleashed devastating airstrikes against rebel-held areas. Described by the UK Defence Ministry as brutal and corrupt, Sorovakin also has a long history of human wave-style strategies and attacks on civilians in Syria, Chechnya, Tajikistan, Afghanistan and elsewhere. He was quoted by Russian military bloggers as saying that, I don't want to sacrifice Russian soldiers' lives in a guerrilla war against hordes of fanatics armed by NATO, and that we have enough technical means to force Ukraine to surrender. For Sorovakin, this means concentrating Russia's troops in certain areas, while wreaking havoc on Ukraine's civilian population through attacks on the electrical grid and other key institutions. But while this is in some ways similar to its past approaches, Russia today faces many different constraints, and this time around a human wave strategy that could prove to be disastrous for the country. For one thing, modern Russia lacks the population to sustain such a devastating approach to warfare. Any country taking heavy combat losses will eventually be unable to replace them fast enough. This may be especially true here since, in the span of a single year, Russia has lost more soldiers than the United States did across the entire Vietnam War. It lost more soldiers in the first two weeks of the invasion than the US did during 20 years in Afghanistan and Iraq. These catastrophic numbers could mean that Russia will soon reach a state of combat fatigue. Ben Barry, a senior fellow at the International Institute for Strategic Studies, has stated that Russia has assembled what I call a steamroller. We don't know at what point Russia will run out of steam. Battlefield success is usually measured by relative casualties and territory gained or lost, but by either measure, Russia appears to be falling behind. This suggests that there may be a point in the coming months where Putin's government reaches a culminating point where an offensive runs out of supplies or sustains so many casualties that it can't be sustained. Russian artillery strikes have been decreasing for months, even as Putin seeks out cheaper weapons like Iranian-made Shahed Kamikaze drones. This indicates to many that Russian arms are running low, likely the result of sanctions and the powerful HIMARS rocket systems which Ukraine has used to destroy ammunition depots. Mark A. Milley, chairman of the US Joint Chiefs of Staff, has stated that Ukraine is steadily degrading the Russian ability to supply their troops, command and control of their forces. Russia's human wave tactics will likely only delay this process, but the costs may be too high to bear. Whatever course the war takes this winter, it is unlikely to become less brutal anytime soon. 
especially since the colder weather will likely result in even more casualties. But will Sorovakin's human wave tactics work, or will Ukrainians continue to retake their territory as Russia is forced to fall back? Let us know what you think in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe for more expert military analysis.